Have you ever seen a shadow figure lurking in the corner of your room? What would you do if you woke up and saw a tall man looming over you? How can you tell what's a hallucination and what's real? Today, we test the believability of the hat man. Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. That is right. It's another Tuesday. Halloween is literally, I can see it. It's looming. It, it's looming and lurking it's just like, like today's. Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Yes, I can see it. It is right around the corner. It is just about Halloween time. I hope everybody has their costumes picked out. I'm going as a cow. Charlie, do you know what you're going as? I, I know it's almost here. I'm not sure. Thinking maybe Mario. You still have a little time. Know. You still have a little time. Mario could be fun. It could be fun. I might do Mario. I think you should. And you know when we're going to do this? We're going to do it on our live episode, which is going to be on October 28th, 9 p.m. on Twitch. But before we get to that. Yeah. We have a big, 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 big topic. We have. This one is huge. You've said before, <laughs> this is when we'll end the podcast. So I'm hoping that's not true. <laughs> we have at least one more episode live on Twitch next week. Or I guess technically this week, the 28th. No, the podcast is not ending, but we are finally doing the hat man. It's a big topic. It's a popular topic. And honestly, I'm ready to dive into it if you are. Tip my hat to you. Yes, I am. So, in the simplest of terms, the hat man is this tall, shadowy entity. What's tall, though? That's relative. Okay, I'll give you that. Six to seven feet. Oh. Now, if you're- much taller than us. If you're a quarterback and you play for the Carolina Panthers, six foot might not be enough. You know? All I'm saying is the hat man probably doesn't get balls bad at the line of scrimmage. All right. Is that a football thing? I'm talking about Baker Mayfield. Gotcha. I'm a scorned lover out here in Cleveland. Well, Okay. So, regardless, tall it's tall enough for- Taller than us. You and I. We are on that Al Pacino. <laughs> We're talking six to seven feet tall. I'd be like, oh, God. It's and But some people say taller. Like, some people say closer to eight to ten. Like, let me, let me actually paint this picture, right? Because uh, we like to do that from time to time. So, you're laying down. You're sleeping. It's dark. You don't have a nightlight because you're over 12 years old. And, and you wake up, and you look, and you see something- in the corner of your room and you rub your eyes because you're like no way why would a man with a hat and a trench coat be standing in the corner of my room and you're looking and you rub your eyes and you look and you see not only is it a man wearing a hat in the corner of your room but it is this large tall individual and he's so tall and and he's not doing anything he's not bothering you he's just there watching you but he's so tall that literally he has to arch his back against the ceiling because he is so tall ominous creepy just spooky spooky stuff yeah that is that is um oh that give me the tingles yes but again so tall shadow figure you're not seeing any color here some people have claimed to see red eyes i the most sources that i read did not say anything about red eyes except for a couple so I, i'll say it that is what i'm saying a little grain of salt there. just a little it's just it's like when you put the little it's it's like the bay leaf right or not the bay leaf but it's like the the thing you just the pinch of the whatever pinch, the pinch yeah it's of the salt. pinch of whatever it's the red eyes uh but you all he always this is what he always comes equipped with always comes with his trench coat or old style clothing okay height just opaque blackness and the hat i think the i hat. already said the hat the but hat. i'm gonna oh, emphasize well, the hat really quick yeah explain the hat it's wide brimmed. It's not like a baseball cap. He's not, he's not me wearing a baseball cap backwards. Sup, man? Just chilling in your room watching you sleep. I'm the hat man, bro. I'm bruh. the hat man, bro. <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's a brimmed hat. It's like, I've heard it described as fedora, but I actually think of a fedora more as a narrow brim. It's, it's more of a wide brim. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, um, I think of like minister 1800s. Yeah. I could, I think that's actually a really good reference. It, and it's more about the silhouette. Like when I'm saying shadow man, like you can tell it's a person, but when you look at the silhouette, it's just like this head that goes up in just this long yeah. hat. He uh, does it for the aesthetic. Yes, he does. He he looks in the mirror before he walks in the room. He's like, you go kill him. <laughs> you go kill him. 
but trench coat, so it's got this long old That's style scary. clothing. Yeah, it's just nobody. I don't want to say nobody who wears a trench coat is up to anything good, <laughs> but it it's a choice. You don't just you don't you're not just walking around Walmart and you look down and you're like oh I didn't even realize so I picked, I picked the trench coat full today full length trench coat <laughs> yeah okay oh, it was just I left it out you know no, yeah. it's, I feel like it's an intentional choice well th- here's the thing it's been a it's been marred since the 1990s from the trench coat mafia yeah from the you know Dylan and I was say Dylan and Sprouse that's not right Dylan and and Eric Klebold mm. killers from Columbine I was thinking of the uh, people for that flash that's not the same <laughs> no it's not <laughs> different. Different, different yeah. thought process. So that's basically what you're seeing. But how is it making you feel? Some people claim that it they're not feeling anything from the entity. They just see it. And obviously they're startled. No one wants or expects to see that. But they're not feeling any, any sort of way from it. Others claim that it feels very menacing and that it, it's it's there with ill intentions and uh, it's it's not a good thing. So what is so what does he actually do? I know I mentioned he kind of lurks around and and he does typically lean more on the passive side of things like he's not going to come up and smack you in the face or you know anything like that but do people do claim that they'll wake up and he is like leaning over the bed looking at you which would just absolutely I I, I would be just terrified. I know he's not described as bird like but I get a bird like vibe. Does that mm. make sense? Like I can almost see it with that with that mask from the doctors, oh. of, like a plague mask. Yeah, I can definitely I can definitely see what you're talking about there. So bird like. Yeah, yeah, the okay. plague mask. You know, it's okay. like, it's like this thing. No, it, it well, it has that menacing vibe to it. Yeah, even if you can't like put your finger on it necessarily, other than the fact that it's a little disfigured or like it's just off. Off. But yeah, so a lot of people think just lurking around, very passive, not necessarily bad. But on the other hand, some people think he is a harbinger of bad news, sort of like a banshee or a doppelganger. And even further down that line of sinisterism, some people think he's up to some bad juju. They think that uh, he's actually evil, has evil intentions, and and he doesn't directly harm you. It's not the physical side of it, but it's the the psychological, like a good psychological horror film. Like he gets in your head. Like he isn't just peacefully watching you. He doesn't stumble into your room. It is intentional. I am going to stand here. I'm going to be leaning over the bed. I'm going to be in this corner to cause stress. Right. So it's not like, it's not like I'm coming at you with a knife is I'm going to be in your peripheral vision because I know it's going to freak you out. I know it's going to stress you out. Yeah. I've always associated him as like with a shadow figure, but more. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, it is more than that. It's like, and we'll get into what the hat man could be here shortly, but I feel like it's easy to just classify him as like, Oh, he's just a shadow figure, but there really is something more to it. And and you could say it's the hat but the, it it seems <laughs> in like in like video game that's terms too arbitrary in video game terms it's like you have like the common folk that you have to fight or kill mm-hmm. and then every now and then there'll be like a bigger one and then you know when their life bar comes up on the screen you're like oh it's a boss battle yeah i feel like he's that like he's very similar to the the common entity that you fight in a game but then he's like just the the extra version of it that becomes like a little battle I gotcha. That's a, is that, does that analogy work for you? That analogy is maybe one of the best analogies of the hat man there is. And it's not even about football. So, you know, there's some thought put in that. The idea of the hat man being bad is kind of something we talk a lot about on this podcast is intention because that makes it very different than like a cryptid or a ghost mm-hmm. where it's like the idea that this hat man, it just happens to be at the wrong place at the wrong time and you just happen to catch it or he's reliving a last moment and you catch it. A lot of people believe it's not that. It's not passive. It's that thoughtful he, menacing. Yes. Yeah. Thoughtful menacing. Yeah. Like like the dog man we've talked about before, and that was almost like a a, a creature. A it's creature. just is living into life and you see it. Yeah, and if there's anything that violent comes from it, like if you accidentally hit it with your car, you know, it's gonna behave the way an animal would behave. Like yeah. If you corner an animal, if you are violent towards an animal, it might lash back. Where, you know, in that case, the dog man was just, you buying your business on mine, mine. Yeah. Another thing which we will get to about the hat man is it's kind of relation to sleep paralysis, which we've talked about before on the podcast, but we'll get to that. But here's a quote that I thought was interesting. It's from the website, hunt a killer quote. He can appear to anyone at any time, but the pattern seems to be that the hat man 
often comes around people who are in turmoil, not unlike the appearance of poltergeists who feed off the strong energy of those in distress in order to manifest. Okay. Unquote. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Right. So it's just another little another little piece of the puzzle. And like I said, we're going to get to the sleep paralysis here shortly. But first, let's actually look at the hat man itself and let's see what do we think the hat man could be. All right, so let's run down through a list of a few ideas of what the hat man could be, starting with the most obvious. It's just a shadow figure. It just happens to be a shadow figure wearing a hat. Okay, okay. You fit a little fancy, put a hat on. Yeah, put a hat on. Oh, you had that Ohio, long A. Ohio A. I you know. had that long A. I that was like it came out. you hit the keyboard three times with that A. But that's okay. Yeah. Now, I mean, sure, it might seem like with a hat and the menacing potential, but not that other shadow figures aren't menacing. I mean, they certainly can be. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it's just a chance that we're putting more into it than what's really there, and it's just it's just a, a normal, lurking, creepy shadow figure, right? I don't necessarily buy this next one, but it has been suggested. Some people think it's a demon. Ooh, um, some I people think that. the hat man is a demon. I get it to a certain extent with the idea of like the intention to cause harm, the ill feelings and the fear, but it doesn't quite seem as extreme or definitely not as evil as a demon. We have encounters later on in this episode with the hat man. So you can make that, that decision up for yourself, but it just really, it doesn't feel like you're dealing with something demonic here. Other than the idea that maybe it is purposely trying to freak you out. Okay. But it doesn't quite feel like it hits that level of just complete terribleness. Okay. I think you'll find this one interesting. Interdimensional being. So could the hat man be a normal person or an entity from a different dimension that is either accidentally or purposefully slipping into our dimension? I do find that interesting. I like that one a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that, that, like, one thing that backs that up is the fact that the hat man takes on kind of an, an observer role, right? Yeah. The, the hat man isn't interacting with you the same way. If, if, if somebody's intentionally going into another dimension and they don't want to mess things up, they might just kind of see what's observe. going on, observe it, check yeah. it out. And that kind of fits a lot with what people report with the hat man. That's true. And also, maybe if you do interact, maybe it, like, messes up your phase sync or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you, like, fall out. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's, we don't know the rules. There's no rule book right. on it, unfortunately. Just like, what's a catch? Football, we don't know. This is another one that I think you'll like, but I, I don't know if you'll buy it. I don't think there's enough to back this up personally, but I, I saw it out there, so I'm going to talk about it. Alien. What? Some people think the hat man could potentially be an alien. I think along the same way, it's like, it is an observer. You know, aliens are known to be more observers than obviously they abduct people or they, I could, people okay. claim to be abducted. So I could see that. I really could see that, especially if you factor in, like, modifying memories. Oh, my God. I'm so happy you said that because that's my <laughs> next point about it. Okay. And it's actually really creepy. I'll let you finish. Did you have more to that thought, though? I don't want uh, to steal it from you. Well, if 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 well, if well, it is an alien, it's modifying memories. It, it's blocking out what it actually is, yes. right? So you see this thing. Yes. And it's just kind of a blank space. That was exactly the conclusion I came to as well, which is kind of remarkable that we both came to that conclusion. For the, I, makes sense. Y'all know we don't share notes. Like Charlie <laughs> has no idea what I'm talking about here in terms of like my screen. Yeah, I just freeballed that. Yeah, it was great off the cuff. But it's actually really creepy to think about. It's kind of like in a much lighter term. It's like the the Will Smith with the the light, the red oh, light. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it's like what if. Whether it's you and your brain, it wouldn't be you and your brain because other people would remember it differently. But like, what if every person that claims to see the hat man is actually seeing an alien is just changing the way you perceive it or it's changing what you're allowed to see? Mm -hmm. Or like we were just saying, or you brought up, it's actually altering your memory so that it removes it from your memory and it is then replacing it with this hat man shadow figure. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, going into this one, I was not leaning towards alien. I kind of like that. I'd like it too. All right. Here's the last one. It's kind of insane, but it, it, I don't think it's more insane than alien. Maybe it is. Astral projection. Do you, are you familiar with astral projection? I know it's a big thing in the movie Insidious. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Going into the further mm -hmm. or, the, or the herp derp, <laughs> as, as we called it. He's gone into the herp derp. But I mean, it'll be, a, it's a topic for another day, but just so that since I'm talking about, it, I have to explain it. The idea 
of astral projection is essentially the ability to leave your body when you're asleep and you can explore areas, explore their dimensions potentially. And it's, it's an out of body experience. You're not physically doing it, but it is you, whether it's your spirit, your soul, your mind, some part of you is able to leave your body and explore, right? You knew that. Yeah. Yeah. So the theory suggests that there's one weird, strange person who has honed this ability and his or her, their astral projection is the hat man. And they are astral projecting themselves out with that identity. And that is what people are seeing. How long has the hat man been reported being seen? Long time. There's no like the first time the hat man has been reported, but I mean, over like 20, 30 years, easy. So Mm. it'd have to be somebody... Like, at least in their 50. (laughs) At least. But you need that much time to hone your skills, right? Yeah, well, you you would, you'd have to be, so are they 50 when they figured it out? Are they 50 now? That's an interesting theory. I wonder. I wonder. So those are the, those are the different ideas of what the hat man could be, which will all be discussed at the very end of the episode, which is our discussion where we break down the topic and whether or not we find it believable. On our scale that goes from believable to viable to skeptical to unbelievable. But first, let's talk about how the hat man relates to sleep paralysis. So the hat man is deeply connected with sleep paralysis, which let me explain that really quick. So sleep paralysis, which we've done an episode on. So if you like, if you like what you're about to hear in the next 30 mm-hmm. seconds, there is a whole episode on it in the it's old much hat. earlier, way back in the catalog. Yeah, way back. Basically, sleep paralysis is when your brain wakes up, but your body is still sleeping, like the chemicals and everything, like it, you know, th- preventing you from moving, like when you're dreaming and stuff like that. So your body is still, can't move, but your mind is awake, your eyes are open, and it it lends to, to hallucinations, right? Because you might be freaking out that I can't move, I'm awake, but my body is like frozen, this weird feeling. But also, this is when people... The most common thing associated with it in the paranormal space is the old hag. People say this like creepy, terrifying woman will like crawl up on your bed and she'll either like sit on you, put pressure on you or choke you because it makes you feel like you can't breathe. Like Mm -hmm. there's this immense weight on your chest. Likewise, beyond the old hag, a lot of people also claim to see the hat man during this. So there's a lot of research and a lot of studies involved with, are you actually seeing this hat man, this shadow figure entity? Or is it just you're suffering from sleep paralysis and you're hallucinating this entity? Now, the unique thing is that multiple people claim to see the hat man. So it's it's not like one person's experience that like one case study right. that we're looking at. But multiple people do also suffer from sleep paralysis. Yeah. So it could be something across the board. Or is something causing sleep paralysis? That was one of the things we talked about. And I don't yeah. want to say my opinion on that. Okay, you have okay. to go check that out. That's a tease right there. But I will also say that one of the factors that lead to sleep paralysis is stress. Okay. You, like, one, like when they were like, if you are suffering from sleep paralysis and you don't want to have it anymore, because we joke, remember one was like, don't be related to your family, you know, because it can be genetic in certain ways. Yes. But one of it is stress. If you're feeling high stress, not, I'm not saying if you are stressed, you will have sleep paralysis, but it is one of the factors. Could be something that leads to it. Yes. And that was also one of the things associated with people that see the hat man. Mm. High stress. That turmoil. So just drawing connections, not necessarily saying that's a conclusion, but just want to throw that out there. But now let's get into the encounter space a little bit, because this is where I love to live. We have plenty of them. I'm excited to get into it. And have you heard about the hat man project? No, what's that? Okay, so there's a guy named Tim Brown, and he had an experience with the hat man in the early 90s, 1994, or I guess you might say the mid-90s, when he was 14 years old. Okay. And it was terrifying, it left this imprint on his mind, on his brain bone, and uh, and he, he he couldn't get it out of his mind, he had another experience later, and he started realizing he wasn't alone in this, this experience of seeing the hat man. He knew that there were other people out there. And he actually started this website, which is kind of like a blog, known as the Hat Man Project. Okay. So he reports his own findings. He has his story out there, but he also collects stories from other people and houses them there. This is an old website. Not, I mean, I don't think he, he built in 08. Oh, okay. Not the 90s. So he experienced in the 90s, but this project started in 08. Okay. 
right, right. around the, the huge blogging craze. Yeah. Where people started doing like inbound marketing stuff, which was a gold mine for this episode, but not every encounter is from here. Don't worry. I, I slid Reddit in here. You don't have, <laughs> you goodness. don't have to worry. I was, but before we get to that, I mean, this is, I don't, this isn't like the first encounter, but this is the start of this huge look into the hat man project, which this is neither here nor there. I was just thinking about this. Have you seen the, the, oh God, haunted hill house? Did you end up on watching Netflix? them? Yeah. I no. I watched like an episode. It's so good. It's spooky. Yes, it is. It's very it's spooky. It's very, very spooky. Um, and if you're out there like, eh, was it that spooky? Well, we thought it was. I'm a little baby. Okay. I'm scared of many, many horror movies. One of the entities were, is it like a, 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 um. There's more than one entity? In, yeah. I thought it was just the one lady. In, no. Oh, I know nothing about. Were this you thinking about show. the bent neck lady? Yes, that's not. I, I'm not. I'm not going into this. <laughs> okay. There, there's a. What is? Is it a bowling hat? What is? What is it a called? Bowler. Bowler hat. Is that what it's? <laughs> yeah, a bowler. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a bowl haircut, but it's a hat. The Minister of Magic from Harry Potter wears a bowler. Okay. Yes, that hat. That is the exact hat I'm referring to. There is a an entity in that show that is like a shadowy figure and it wears that hat and they kind of call it the hat man okay. and they think it's a nod to this entity makes sense totally just, makes sense because you know it's like well where's you know if this is such a popular entity where is it in pop culture there you go that's not here or there i just was it, it came to my mind but it makes, no it makes sense though that it, it, it is it is a big entity yeah and, and and i guess my lead into that was that the hat man project didn't start this but it was a major influence and push in it. Mm-hmm. So he kind of has, Tim, has his encounter in his own words. And I want to read it because it I, I think it's incredibly interesting. Quote, my experience with the hat man came in 1994 when I was about 14 years old. I was living with my grandmother and my great grandmother at the time in my home in Nashville. I had been staying up really late. And at about two in the morning, I found myself lying in bed and nodding off as I was watching TV. The lights were all off, and the only light that was lighting my room was coming from the TV set in front of me. From where I was lying in my bed, looking down towards my feet, I had a clear view all the way into and through my great-grandmother's room. I could also see into the hallway just on the far side of her room. Just inside the hallway was the doorway going into my grandmother's room. As I was lying there, with the covers pulled up to my face, nodding off, my eyes would open and fall open and fall, over and over again. And then at some point, something I heard on TV made a noise, and it caused me to wake up and open my eyes a little bit wider. Only this time, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I always had a fear about intruders and what I would do if someone broke into our house. For just a brief moment, I thought that the movement I was seeing might be my grandmother getting up to use the restroom. But as I moved my eyes more into focus, Looking down through my great-grandmother's room into the hallway, I very quickly realized that wasn't my grandmother. What I saw gripped me immediately with both fear and dread. I saw a tall, human-like figure, and the figure looked like that of a man. The man had no distinguishable features whatsoever. I could see no eyes, no nose, no mouth, only blackness. He looked like a shadow, only darker much darker. He had a very wide-brimmed hat and a long trench coat that flowed as he moved. I started to tremble. My heart began to race. At that moment, I came to the conviction that there was indeed an intruder in my house. As I watched him move, in the back of my mind, I began to play out scenarios as to what he and I was going to do. Was I going to yell? Was I going to get up and run after him? Try to fight him? I kept looking into the hallway. He stood there as the threshold between my great-grandmother's room and my grandmother's room. He leaned his head and body into my great-grandmother's room and looked in, turning his head toward her and then toward me. I had my eyes closed as much as I could so I could still see him, yet still look like I was sleeping. He stood there for what seemed like an eternity, just staring. He then moved very slowly and without sound back into the hallway just out of view. As I kept watching, I saw this figure move toward my grandmother's room. Just like before, he leaned his body and head in the doorway, looking at her, but again not making a sound. He then leaned back and moved out of view into the hallway. At this point, I didn't know what else to do. 
I was convinced that we had some kind of burglar in the house. So I summed up as much courage as I could, jumped up out of my bed yelling and charging into the hallway ready to fight. I turned to the hallway and he was gone. Obviously my yelling and screaming startled and woke up both my grandmother and my great grandmother. I told them what had happened and needless to say we didn't get much sleep for a long time. And when we did, we left the lights on. After my experience at night and during the next day, I spent a lot of time talking with my family about what had happened. I was surprised to know that my experience of the man with his hat and this trench coat was not the only one that had happened in that house. As it turned out, both my grandmother and my great-grandmother had seen the same thing. My grandmother relayed to me that a few nights prior, she woken up in the middle of the night and saw a dark figure walk past her doorway in the dim light of the hallway. Then, my great-grandmother told me that she also, on a separate occasion, had seen the same dark shadow being lurking in the house at night. I honestly didn't know what to make of it. And over the years as time passed, I had grown very antagonistic against the whole thing, brushing it off as a mere happenstance, a figment of my imagination, or maybe the result of just nodding off and being in that weird between place of being half awake and half asleep. I thought about it every now and then, but regulated to the back of my mind, paying very little attention to it. And I continued to feel this way until about 2001. And that is when everything changed. I was driving a long distance one night and hitting the scan button to see if I could find something to listen to on the radio to help me pass the time. The station landed on 1510 WLAC on a show called Coast to Coast AM, George Nori. Hell yeah. It was probably 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. when the show came on. They were doing a show on what was called Shadow Beings. It was the first time that I'd ever heard something like this being discussed. As I listened to the show, nothing could prepare me for what I heard next. George Norrie and the guest went on to describe people's experience with one particular shadow being, a man-like figure with a large, wide-brimmed hat and a cape. Immediately, I felt chills run down my spine. I knew at that moment that what had happened to me as a teenager was not a figment of my imagination and was definitely not the result of me nodding off. I had seen exactly what these people were describing. I began researching as much as I could at the local library and on the internet. There wasn't much information on the internet about the hat man or shadow people in those days. And so I decided to build my first website dedicated to the research of shadow people, and in particular, the being that I had seen, known as the Hat Man. Unquote. And that is from the Hat Man Project, which yeah. is amazing. If you just, if you like this episode, and you want a little bit more, and there, there's a ton of, there's TV shows, there's documentaries, there's other podcasts, but if you like reading stories, I highly recommend going to the Hat Man Project and going to some of the experiences and the encounters. Not all of them are that long. They're kind of like popcorn. You'll see some of them here in this episode. It's just incredibly interesting. So with that said, let's move on to some more encounters. So one thing I want to mention real quick is we talked a little bit about it last episode, but we have been keeping up with Magic Mind and the 14 Days of Magic, and we haven't talked about it yet. So Charlie, where are you at? How are you feeling? Overall, I'm feeling pretty magically focused you know what i mean like i'm i'm taking them and you know, like we said before it's not straight but it does help it tastes better now too i think it's an expectation thing i don't agree it's for me like i know what it is going into it and it's actually kind of creeped into my routine like i'm noticing myself when because so this has been kind of a life change for me it's new job i'm working from home i have a whole new office set up and this opportunity with Magic Mind kind of came at the same exact moment. So now I have this new routine of like making coffee at home, uh, getting my water bottle, going upstairs, setting up my desk the way, you know, like monitor. And Magic Mind has actually creeped in there. When I make my coffee, I grab the Magic Mind and I take it. And honestly, for the first few hours, I feel good. So, uh, you know, the 14 days aren't up. We have to keep going through it. But I definitely have to say that things feel good. Yeah, it's... um. I'm surprised by how much it's uh, become a part of my life. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty sweet. And we do have a code. So if you use Bizarre14, if you go to magicmind.co forward slash 
14 days of magic, you'll get 20% off. But uh, I've just been enjoying it. We've actually been using it every single day. It's pretty cool. But let's get back to the hat man. All right, we're going back to the source hunt a killer. And this is our first encounter from Tammy. Quote, I'm 44 now, but as a very young child, around three, I remember waking every single night at 3.33 a.m. to use the bathroom and this hat man shadow thing about seven feet tall and these unnaturally long fingers would be at the bottom of the stairs looking at me. Oh, my God. How do you consist? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you're sorry. I. This isn't a long one, so there won't be music right Okay. So you can have your reaction. Okay. How could you... How could you consistently do that as a child? I know. You just start peeing your pants then. You're like, yeah. you're 10 years old and you're still using pull-ups. And it's like, I don't know why you're doing a potty train. Maybe it's the demon at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Do you think about that, Deborah? Quote, I remember evil emanating from this thing. It scared me so bad that I would sleep in my closet with a flashlight. I saw that thing until I was 12 years old. Then he was gone. Well, so I thought. I did see him one more time in my 20s. Standing at the foot of my young daughter's bed. I was terrified for her. <laughs> but she did walk past and just go, ooh. <laughs> I, really her problem. Use, I really have to use the bathroom. So. <laughs> Not my problem. Stay in my lane here. All right. Encounter two from Teresa, also on a killer. In 1997, I was living in this house. My kids would tell me that they saw a figure and they described this entity at six feet or taller with a long coat and a large brim style hat. I didn't believe them till one night I was home by myself. I got up around 1 a.m. to go to the bathroom and there was that image standing in the doorway of my room and it never crossed over the threshold. It just stood there watching me. I closed the door in its face and I pulled the cover over my head. I shared it with my kids and they said, I told you. We then moved because the house is going up for sale by the owners. Encounter three. This comes to us from uh, uh, the way that they phrase it. I was born and raised on the Great Lakes, Cleveland, <laughs> Ohio. Lake Erie. Let's go. Alrighty. Here we go, brownies. So name is Tibor. Quote, my first memories of my childhood home is of the hat man. My family would say I would stare off into the darkness of the house at night and I'd play peekaboo until the wee hours. They would ask me what I was doing, and I'd explain to them, I'm playing with the old man over there. Of course, they weren't happy to hear that. They already believed something was not right about this house, and strange incidents would happen in our home. In my early years, my parents would later explain to me a bunch of strange incidents and events that would happen. But once I could start having memories around the age of four and five, I recall this man at night, and even now at 51... I can still remember that dark feeling that came from him. I would then recall why I ended up in my parents' bed every single night that we lived in that house. I remember him being a mean, mean man, and he would scare me so badly. I recall I could not look at the windows or the mirrors in my room. I had to keep my eyes fixed upon the floor because I refused to make eye contact. I would have to cover up my head with my blanket to gain the courage to make my run past him without making eye contact to get to my parents' bed. I can remember my parents arguing a lot about these incidents. Okay, so this is our fourth encounter from Stephanie. Quote, I was about eight years old in 1980 in Minnesota when I first saw the hat man. He was standing in the corner of my room by my door watching me. It was bedtime and I had a nightlight bulb in my lamp. The lamp was on and he had a fedora and a trench coat. I got scared and immediately hid under my blanket. After a while, I peeked to see if he was still there. It looked really, really dark in my room, and then I saw the dark move, and his blank eyes appeared looking at me. I put the covers down instantly and just stayed like that until I eventually fell asleep. The next morning, I told my mom, and to this day, she will say I almost convinced her there was a man in my room. Then I was watching YouTube in my home in Florida about five years ago, and there was a video about the hat man, and I right away recognized this is what I saw as a child. I showed my mom the video, and my daughter saw it too and started crying. I asked what was wrong, and she told me that 
That was the man she saw at my window a few weeks earlier. We were in my bedroom at night, and my daughter looked out my window and freaked out and said that this was the man, this was the hat man that she saw outside. I interpreted the hat as a baseball cap without asking her to clarify. I went outside to see who it could be and, and what could be out there, but there was no one in sight. Before I went out, my terrified daughter begged me not to go out and look anymore. We've since moved, and we haven't seen him since. Unquote. Oh, that's got that horror movie twist at the end. Yeah. The daughter. Yeah. Just chilling in the family. This next encounter, Encounter 5, this one is pulled from the Hatman Project. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Quote, while living on a base in Anchorage, Alaska, I saw a tall man in my bedroom twice. One night, I woke up to who I thought was my husband standing at the foot of my bed. I called out my husband's name, but I heard him groan next to me. I quickly looked at my husband and then back at the figure, but it vanished. About a week later, I woke up again to see a tall man standing next to the bed on my husband's side. This time, I could see that the man appeared to be wearing some type of hat and a trench coat. I saw my husband laying next to me, so I knew it wasn't him. A few seconds passed, and one of my dogs woke and began to growl in the direction of the figure. The figure then swung his coat over himself and disappeared, and I haven't seen him since. I later described the incident to my parents, and they told me, as a child, I used to describe seeing a figure walking outside her house that I called the trench coat man. Unquote. Man, that is it's just this weird connection that we've seen a lot. Like, saw it as a kid, came back. It's saw familial. It as a kid, came back. Yeah. 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 It seems like he doesn't go away or just like there's like time jumps, time periods. Yeah. Which I think really leans into that. Like, it's not of this plane. Mm. So you're thinking interdimensional alien. Yeah. Something. Still could be shadow figure. It's not like we have shadow figures figured out. For sure. You know, <laughs> figure, figure, figure. All right, next encounter is from Reddit. Ah, I love the Reddit encounters. Oh I don't know why. I just have a special place in my heart. No, no, no. There's, there's a reason. Reddit and Ranker. Yeah, Ranker. <laughs> this is scary. Quote, God, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about this and reading other stories. Until today, I had never heard of the hat man, let alone been face to face with him. I was scrolling through Facebook when I scrolled past a drawing of him and I read this person's encounter with him. And then suddenly, I remembered it all. He was always standing in the same spot. I don't remember when he showed up or when he left, but I'll never forget how it felt being around him. He was always standing in the right half of my basement, in the left corner. He was next to the coat rack with that evil hat, and I froze. What I thought I was seeing was like Jeepers Creepers. At least that's what I told my grandma. I'd cry and scream every time she'd have me go down there. It was always about this Jeepers Creepers hat that petrified me. My grandma kept telling me over and over again, it was just a hat. It was just a hat on a coat rack. I just knew that there was something evil about it. So I'd always demand to know whose hat it was. And she would always give me some BS story. I can't remember the last time I saw him. But eventually, I went down there and the hat was gone. Along with the man, of course. Months later, I finally got the courage to go to that half of the basement. And I always stayed in the doorway. I searched that basement and I never found the hat. I just brushed it off and that was the last time I ever thought about it. And thought about that hat until tonight. I honestly believed it was a hat on top of a trench coat. And, and maybe I just had a vivid mind and I was just imagining my worst fear. But tonight, I learned that there's something scarier than the Jeeper Creepers hat. It was always in the exact same spot. Every time. Never moved. This thing I saw never spoke. It was pitch black. And honestly, the scariest part is now I know others have seen him too. Now all I can think of is what is he? What does he want? And is he coming back? Unquote. That's an interesting uh, repression there memory repression yeah, absolutely i don't i've never had anything on that grand of a scale of mm -mm. repression but i think there are those things where you know you forget something for a while and then whether it's a sight a smell some something type of brings it back. stimulus right and then 
it all comes flooding back. Yeah. Not this. But then again, maybe there is something that we all have, or you have, or I have, or you listening have. Knock that on if, wood. If there was something that recalled that memory, it would just be terrifying. Oof. Hopefully, uh, that never comes undone. Yeah. But that said, those are the encounters. That is the descriptions and the stories of the Hat Man. It is time for us to discuss. Before we get to the discussion, we like to stop the episode and thank our newest patrons as of the recording of this episode, which is Mariah, Sathaniel, Riley, and Persephone. Thank you so much for joining our Patreon and supporting the podcast. It means a lot. Charlie is here, but he's not here. It's kind of like a weird uh, timing that we did with this episode because it was so special. So I'm just going to shout out real quick. Normally, it's like, oh, what is what is Persephone going to get? Well, I'm going to tell you. Persephone, being in the Patreon, being a dedicated tier member, you get everything. You get quizzes. You get fun segments like Do You Believe the Bazaar? And Bizarre News, where we talk about news stories that are a little bit strange, a little bit weird. We do interviews. We watch movies together on Netflix. We do Google Hangouts where we literally for an hour every month just jump on and just chat about whatever. Sometimes Cleveland sports, sometimes video games. Who knows? Also, being in the dedicated tier, you get an exclusive t-shirt that you cannot buy. It is only sent to you for free by being a member of the dedicated tier for three months. Theatrical readings are coming back. Just Take a look. Go to Patreon forward slash Believe in the Bazaar. There is so much bonus content, so much extra stuff. We're really excited about it. But also, just want to shout this out really quick. Remember, this Friday, this Friday, October 28th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we are doing our live Halloween special. It's going to be a fun episode live on site only on Twitch, which makes it obviously 100% free. But you do have to have a Twitch account. You have to be uh, following us on Twitch. So make sure you do that ahead of time to prepare for Friday night. We're super excited. We love doing these live Halloween episodes. And with that said, let's get back to the Hat Man episode. So the discussion. This is the time that Charlie and I discuss, as it's called, uh, the discussion. This is when we look at the story, look at the topic, and actually break down how believable we find it to be. Yeah, because we have our scale. Here we do. Our believability scale, if you will, from believable to viable to skeptical to unbelievable. Yes. So let me ask you a couple of questions, Charlie. Yes, please. Um, please take over the mic. My throat is dry. <laughs> okay. A lot of talking. Um, so we talked about aliens. We talked about interdimensional beings, astral projection. Yeah. Yeah. As- what, what are you, what are you leaning towards? Well, ultimately, I don't really think it matters toward the believability of it. Just, it's kind of like a guess, right? Oh, yeah. This has nothing to do with whether or not we think it even exists. This is just, we talked about the topic. We talked about its background lore. Like, what might it be? Yeah. Weirdly enough, as we're going through it, I can, I more strongly considered alien than I originally would have thought. I love our theory on it. I don't know if I necessarily buy it, but I think it's very entertaining and I think it's very interesting. The Anchorage. One specifically made me think of Alien. Because of the fourth kind, the movie? <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> Probably a little bias there. But I, I really did. It did fit into that for me, too. Especially with the uh, the dogs waking up and growling. But there is a... Uh, that's a common fact, a common thread as well. Animals having reactions to these negative entities, these negative figures. That's why you got to keep a cat and a dog around, man. That's why you got to. Because... It's not just because you want to buy food every week. <laughs> for them. Yeah, it's not because yeah. when you're laying down to go to bed, they lay on your stomach and your face. No, I got two dogs, and they are for protection. It is to keep ghosts away, and fairies, right, for you? It's the fae. The fae. You can't mess with the fae, because you really shouldn't. And you gotta get a cat around, because they are, like, alarms. Like, you, you've seen The Mummy. Yeah. Oh, Same yeah. concept. I don't know if my cat would do anything in that No, scenario. you just gotta pick it up and throw it. It would just let you know. It's yeah. like, hey, you're about to die, but at least you're gonna know. Yeah. But anyway, I'm really, I think, I'm leaning, I'm leaning spirit, some form of spirit. Actually, I, I was thinking, I wonder if this is some, some kind of like almost elemental gin entity. Ooh. Ooh. I didn't, I didn't even talk about because that Because those are, those are different. Yeah. Kinds of things that aren't quite demons. They aren't quite spirits. They are, there's something in between. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that I think the alien was very interesting. Yeah. I don't necessarily buy it, but I, I think it's like we it's like you're given a um a prompt, right? Like mm-hmm. we were given a prompt and we turned it into a really fascinating story idea, but I don't doesn't necessarily mean I buy it. Right. I just think we ran with it and it was fun, like it was replacing your memory with the shadow figure. I think that's awesome. But I don't I don't think it's true. I don't think it's somebody's astral projection. That's another I don't think so either. Yeah, I mean it's a very creative thought. It I, is. I applaud it. I could see it. Maybe if they had like training and then <laughs> how old's that person? They're up in the mountains training, master <laughs> projection. I can make it be anything. I want it to be the shadow figure with, with the a hat. master. Yeah. Yeah. They're on that Batman and uh, Ra's al Ghul. Yes. So I don't necessarily believe that. I think, I think it's either a, a unique traditional shadow figure or I can kind of buy into the interdimensional to a certain degree because mm-hmm. it has elements of the alien, like the observer it qualities. It does. Yeah. But. Uh, those those are the two that I kind of find myself leaning towards. There's no way for us to know. Obviously, there's we there's no hint. There's no answer. It's not like the <laughs> go to page forty two and at the mm-hmm. bottom it, it's always letter there's C. There's no answer index here. Or you like you flip the book upside down and you just see the answers are at the t- you know what I'm talking about where they're upside down. You yes, gotta, yeah, yeah. This isn't that. Although you know, if you subscribe, maybe there's a chance <laughs> that the answers will be there. You leave a five star. So let me ask you this question, because we're also not, we're not going to get to the bottom of that. So I, this is another thing that we hadn't brought up, but I'm just curious to get your opinion on it. The Hat Man. Mm-hmm. Do you think it is one entity, the Hat Man, or do you think <laughs> there's Hat Men? Do you think this is oh. like, are there multiple that people are experiencing? Huh. Or do you think every person experiencing this entity is seeing the same entity? I wonder if it's because of the name, the Hat Man is the reason I never thought of it being anything other than one thing. I always considered it being one entity visiting multiple people. Although, you never know when those encounters are going to happen, what days, multiple families in one night. I don't know. And he's like Santa Claus. He's on that Santa Claus. No, but it's also <laughs> like with the interdimensional factor, it's like, could he be in two places at one time? Like, yeah. Like, we don't know what rules, you know, this guy's following in terms of like, Space, time. So I'll say I never considered it being more than one. But now asking the question, possibly. Yeah. Also, it's like how many like (laughs) basic ass shadow figures. How many like normal shadow figures out there just happen to have a hat and they're just getting this bad rep? It's Mm. like, hey, listen, I'm just trying to hide in the corner of your your Mm. room. I'm not trying to not trying to be menacing or anything. It's like I'll I'll take it to sports for you. It's like, you know, you meet this cool guy. And underneath his flannel shirt, he buns it open. He's wearing a Steelers shirt. Ugh. Like, he's not a bad guy, I don't probably. Like that. I don't like that. But it's he could be a bad, bad guy. <laughs> he could be a bad guy. So, I, I think you're right. I think Hat Man does make you kind of feel like there's one. But yeah. Who, but who knows? There could be a whole, like, aliens. Like, a right? whole there's, fleet. There's a whole of fleet hat. of Hat Men. Yeah. Just creeping. They're like monsters. In sombrero ships. <laughs> Did any of the encounters stand out to you? I know you mentioned the Anchorage one. Are there yeah. any... um? Anything unique about it or anything that stood out that you'd like to discuss before we give yeah. our final ratings? I kind of mentioned already, but how the hat man seems to be like, seems to like to mess with kids. Um, and also seems to boomerang back into people's lives. Yes. It seems like there is some, and, and not just like back in the same people's lives, but also like parents and children having the same experiences. Yeah. Which in proximity, that would make sense. But, and this is, I guess, I got one more question for you. Hat Man being a real entity, which you don't have to say 100% real, because we'll get to that. But Hat Man versus the sleep paralysis, because genetics do play a role in that. It's true. Stress plays a role in that. It's true. You know, is, do you, do you think, do you think there's a chance that these could just be hallucinations tied to sleep paralysis? I mean, in some cases, maybe. However, in other cases, I don't think so, because how many cases were, talked about even the experiences where people are up and awake and moving and then seeing this thing you know what i mean like there is the mom that walked past it in the daughter's room the daughter that saw it in the window yeah i mean that's true they're not they nec- it wasn't a dream and, and they weren't necessarily sleeping so mm-hmm. but it's like is every hat man encounter the ones that i read today are they all the same entities there a chance that some people are hallucinating and others are just happen to see shadow figures or you know i think there's always that chance but I don't know, it's hard to explain because it seems like this one thing is crept into the, the collective unconscious, right? And it's, it's, it's presenting 
in a way that everyone sees it as the same thing. Yep. So it's hard to say whether one way or another. So Charlie, let me ask you on our believability scale from believable to viable to skeptical to unbelievable. This is obviously our own opinions. Can't speak. We, you know, we're speaking our truth, our truth. Where does the hat man land for you? I go with believable. Yes. Yes. I see. <laughs> Do you, would you like to, uh, elaborate? Yeah. I think it's believable because it, it, it's so consistent in its doings and its mannerisms and its observations and its menacing from afar. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's just passive. And it, it's, it's scarily consistent. I agree. I'm, I'm going viable because it's, it's a little difficult to nail down exactly what I think it could be because it feels like it's more than a shadow figure. If this was just a shadow figure and that's what every, like it was believed to be. Um, I believe in ghosts. I believe in shadow figures. Like that's stuff that isn't hard for me necessarily to buy into. But this one, it seems like there's more to this one and it's, and, and that's hurting it, which isn't fair to me. Um, cause I want to learn more. There's much more information about it, but it definitely is more, it's closer to believable than unbelievable for me for the same exact reason you mentioned, which is that it's consistency. People all around the world are having these experiences with this entity that is wearing a hat and has a trench coat, which is sometimes as described as a cape, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's still mm-hmm. the coat. But yeah, it, it seems incredibly prevalent for it to be unbelievable. The fact that all these different people could imagine, hallucinate the same exact thing. Not that it's the hardest thing to imagine, but I don't know. I'm going to stick with viable. Maybe we'll come back to this topic with more encounters because there's a ton of them and and we'll see. But definitely leaning more towards believable, but I'll give it a viable for today. So that is our episode on the hat man Huge topic. We've teased it for months, maybe yeah. a year. I'd say longer than that. Longer yeah. than months. It's it's a huge topic. I'm glad we're finally doing it. But they can't all be the big ones, you know. Uh, you but okay. no, this is this is like the the shadow figure king. Yeah. If you, yes, you listener listening right now with your earbones, if you have had an experience that you think is the Hat Man, hit us up. I would love to do like we do listener submission collections. Yeah. I would love to do a Hat Man Just special. Just Hat Collections. Yes. Yeah. If we get enough of them, we will absolutely do it. Terrifying. It's. Uh, I wouldn't, I would not want to wake up and see that. Still waiting on that Ohio University collection. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather see an alien or would you rather see this Hat Man in your room? Uh, and I mean like not a UFO. I mean like an alien's coming towards you. He yeah, sees no. you. Alien. Yeah. <laughs> I'd punch it so hard. <laughs> Where would you punch the alien? The head? Uh, it's the biggest target. <laughs> it's the biggest. So yeah, the, the head. It's right in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my dogs would destroy it first. <laughs> you'd be so. eating hot, you'd be eating alien for dinner. Yeah. It's our favorite. It's our gray casserole. <laughs> anyway, thank you everybody so much for listening. It's, it's Halloween time. It's right around the corner. Oh, yeah. And our next episode before this is like <gasps> the live show. The live show. Remember oh, man. that is live on Twitch. Go follow us on Twitch. Believing the Bazaar. It'll be a 9 p.m. Eastern time because we are in Ohio. Yeah. I'm not saying the topic is in Ohio, but it's in Ohio. <laughs> It'll be on Twitch Friday, October 28th, 9 p.m. Eastern time, live on Twitch, a live BTB episode. But don't worry if you can't make it, which you absolutely shouldn't, but if you can't make it, and it is free. I, I think oh, it, yeah, I, should, totally I, free. I feel like that should be so, understood since it's on Twitch, but it is free. But if you, for whatever reason, can't make it or you hate us, that's fine. We, we can take it. <laughs> it will be out on Tuesday. An edited version of it will be out th- the Tuesday, which is like uh, the day after Halloween. Mm-hmm. So you're already in Thanksgiving mode. So you really should check it out this uh, this upcoming yeah. Friday. Just saying. And if you like this episode a lot, I really did, please leave a five star and a review on Apple. And if you're on Spotify, you probably are. Leave a five star. Just so that rating, just click it and move on. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. Come hang out with us this Friday. DM us on Instagram. We're active. Let us know what you're being for Halloween. That's a great icebreaker. Oh, yeah, definitely. Tyler Charlie, love the podcast. I'm going to be a sexy ghost. A sexy ghost. Tyler Charlie, love the podcast. Sexy cat. I'm going to be, you know, a sock. A something. Sock, a big old sock. Yeah. A Chipotle burrito. Yeah, it's a good costume. It Done is, that. It's a great costume. But anyway, everybody, thank you so much for listening. We can't wait to talk to you on Friday. As always, I'm Tyler. I'm Charlie. And catch us next week or this Friday on Believing the Bizarre. The podcast, as bizarre as you are. Happy Halloween.
I fetch. It's a fan of the opera. <laughs> 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 <laughs>